Daily Trading Recap, let us get after it today on this Friday, the 18th of February, 2022. Able to scratch out a little profit here on the day, recovering, starting in that little bit of recovery after that hard P&L day that we had yesterday, but still standing, it's still growing, still learning. Uh, I'm just going to go over some fundamentals or some other housekeeping first before I get into that future trade I had today. NASDAQ, $252 billion volume today. On this options expiration day, we are just two, just about two hours after the close. Nice see, $329 billion volume. OTCs, $1.7 billion volume. I wasn't even seeing any OTCs pop up on the scanner at all for uh, the close here going into the close either. So unfortunate to see no movement really there. Um, the only, I'll start with hook too before I go into that ES trade, that futures trade. This was really only the cool trade that I saw afterwards on today. Call it a third day play. Uh, but yeah, I think Chris was in this one or tried to be in this one with the stupidity that E-Trade is, but it, almost forcing like the optimal entry for me in my view coming in hindsight to this chart would be to get in during pre-market. But then it's just that pre-market um, entrance of a trade be just becomes for me such a fine line of writing of are you actually anticipating a trade or are you writing a full sentiment of the trade potential actually happening from here for how it's holding within this pre-market on the third day here? Just the line of what is your actual probability of this trade happening? Are you just forcing way more out of the chart than um, could actually be there today? Of course, it was ended up turning out to be an awesome trade should you got gotten long in pre-markets here betting on that. But for how many times that this setup occurs, and I forget the float and the metrics for this specific ticker, but along these same line style of charts, how many times do these third days end up happening versus end up just kind of being blah or doing nothing going against you for that style of trade. And that's the dilemma I found myself in a lot of the times and convinced myself because I was taking a small size in the trade, but starting in earlier that, oh, okay, now it's a, now it is more to, of a decent risk reward, even if I'm still trying to be educational with this and just saying, hey, I'm seeing this, I think this could happen. Let me take a small size and throw it at it but just kind of became a mental capital waster for doing that again and again and again and again and all of them just turning out to be losers and taking a death by a thousand paper cuts for how many try times I was trying to predict moves like this, uh, but it just ended up fizzling out or doing nothing. There really was no substance based on the trade and you kind of lucked out. Um, I think would be the best way to describe it for the price action that happened right out of the gate um, for this hook trade today. <sighs> But yeah, I wasn't really watching it hard at all during market hours, but just speaking on it in hindsight here as a reference for me. Uh, but yeah, nothing else popping up on the scanner for the equity side. Um, after the close here or going into the next week, I think we do have a Tuesday start next week, Monday off. Um, then I'll mention back to the future trade that I had today. Uh, before I go into that, it's just this, of course, these past few weeks, I've been going harder into this volatility spread style of trade that I've been wanting to do on the... Um, S&P 500 through ES and MES, going both long and short out of the open, kind of dialing in what I'm looking for, um, and now really even more so defining the time frame that I want to be trading on these stickers. But hey, looking, I think we can get to quarter of a percent above the open price and a quarter percent below the open price within a reasonable time frame or throughout the intraday, which was what I was originally looking for. Um, and the hit rate was there in order to sustain that trade thesis. And that's what I was kind of going on more so and putting more back testing and data collection into, hey, the actual probability of that happening. But unfortunately, like days like yesterday is where the bullet really hits, the bullet meets the rubber. <laughs> that's a new phrase I'm gonna invent there. Of, you know, it did have a nice, I secured a little bit of profit um, layering the spreads of what I thought the potential could go from that open price. But on the days that it doesn't work because nothing is ever gonna be 100%, <clears throat> on the days that it doesn't work, the losses are just going to have to be so massive. And I can't, I mean, even if this price action does drop to like a percent below or vice versa above, it still has a pretty high percent chance based on my data and back testing of ending up going the reverse way, whichever green or red it, um, it tends, it trends in the morning session. So it's just this line of that I'm finding myself in as I'm actually putting this trade into practice and of course, every trade looks beautiful in backtesting, and I think I, as I'm doing this trade, I'm reflecting on a lot of other things that I did with that morning dump setup of, you know, it looks great and beautiful as you're pulling up charts in reflection and in the backtesting, but as it's applied in real life, it is a totally different ballgame, and um, this trade, or this, yeah, this trade that I'm certainly taking on more so is evolving with that real-life application that can try to be as algorithmic and just... 
um, non-emotional about it as I can, but the truth of it is, is yeah, this is hard. These are hard days to be a part of, and the hard PNL losses to take. But by still betting on a high hit rate for that potential happening on the days where I do f feel convicted to start pushing a decent percentage move above and below the price for that specific trade. So in going forward, I think there's going to be definitely more focus on fine tuning the specific weekdays that I attempt to play this strategy, especially. Definitely options, expiration days, which are normally Fridays, Fridays as well, just for how volatile they can be out of the open. I think Mondays as well to offer a nice consistency of volatility right around the open within a 15 to 20 minute time frame from that morning bell is really what I'm looking for. So then going forward more to kind of back to specific days and see, are there any key indicators that I can pick up on that I can identify before market open that give me a clue or a reason why they're volatile or why they do that specific price action that I'm looking for on that specific day or doing vice versa and saying on the days that don't have that, are there key indicators that produce that same type of pattern of just finding the, finding the golden goose, finding that answer of why <laughs> this S&P 500 likes to move the way it does. Um, certainly a battle. It's certainly not the first time that somebody's attempted to do this, but trying my own head at it and seeing if we can continue to just scratch away little by little with each and every day that we can and and using even this trade to supplement what I want to do more so on the small cappers on the OTC stocks on um, all those style of trades in the future if they do start to pick back up again or produce some nice volatility to be able to trade upon repeatedly consistently every single day uh, but on this trade specifically that I had shoulda coulda wouldn't gone in of my thought process was hey I want to just scratch away three points above and below the open price on the future side of buy and sell within 20 seconds of open and then just set those limit orders, identify what I got filled at on those market fills and then put those limit orders in to just kind of walk away with the expectation and data to back it up that I think this is going to happen within the first 15 to 20 minutes. If it doesn't, let's reevaluate, see where we are um, and then just kind of move on. I think that's definitely where I'm going to start going more so in the future of putting a time cap on this one, even though I am going to cut that hit rate for my data short because I don't allow the chart to develop and actually produce that same intraday volume price action. I'm just kind of a very narrowing my window of time and allowing really just focusing in on what produces volatile action right away from the morning session that I don't have to be directional. I don't have to pick the right direction or pick tops, which I was uh, alluding to today of trying to do that precisely because I was just of maybe because of the confusion yesterday or just the situation that I had yesterday coming into today of, Hey, I t taking a $500 loss today is, I certainly don't want to do that, but I, uh, you know, I'm, I was almost willing to do that because I was, had still conviction of, uh, being, allowing it to go to this price and this price. But now off of yesterday as well, forcing more on myself to say, Hey, I've got to be aware of the potential risk I'm taking. I can't just be going nonchalant about this and saying, oh, the data backs it up. But then days like yesterday happened and I thought it was an awesome little trade. And I did save myself a little bit more than if I had just done nothing of that little layering of that spread trade. But coming into today to say, let's establish the trade parameters before we actually get in the trade, which is one of my rule sets. And I broke that rule set with this whole futures trading aspect. <sighs> so I just go off on random tangents there. But um, yeah, coming into today, I then went just totally directional. thought we were going to have a perfect long, you know, my ideal as we're getting closer to market open, for some reason, I thought we were just going to have a perfect little trend up um, with no real downside or selling pressure off of the day we had yesterday. And that's just what I was feeling for some reason, especially how we were selling. But in pre markets here, um, that's just the intuition gut feeling I had. Um, and then got just very scalpy, very quick with the trigger figure to take profits as they were there on that little call and then started to get in short here with this little uh, peak that we had and then it started to press this high day here and then cut that one and then started back in again as it was peeling back below view up again and then took another little profit on that one so I ended up just scalping out a little hundred dollar profit both ways I think it's ended up right around a hundred bucks after the commissions I'm paying on those around trips but gosh yeah, it certainly wasn't the I could have very easily just sat through for five points on that future side for both ways within five minutes of that um, and sitting on a nice little P&L profit without really having to do anything directionally without 
knowing the bias of where the market was going to move today or predicting correctly because I was even wrong in my thesis of it going up for today, having a huge green day. It ended up having a sell-off, dropping all the way to 43182. Um, removing that layer of being directional, I think, is definitely where I want to go with this style of trading and just limiting that time frame, just looking for scalping that volatility, not having to pick direction at precise time, but just being in the volatility at the moment. So that is what this strategy is. And that's what I'm fine tuning more and more. Um, and that I'm definitely going to do over the weekend here going into uh, Tuesday of next week, that's going to be and the following weeks to come after that. That is really all I had just wrapping it up nice, quick and simple here on this Friday, more Excel sheet, more Excel sheets to rip through uh, more just meditation to go over in my own head of what I want to do with this specific trade and how that I can supplement this to my trading career and how I'm, I'm already using this to expand my own knowledge and awareness of how the market works and um, different elements like that. But it is certainly exciting and I'm grateful for every single second, every single loss, every single gain. I am grateful and thankful for it. And I am thankful for you guys watching at home. If you are watching all the way this far, please leave a like. I thank you sincerely and we will catch you guys on the next one.